take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, breathe in a feeling of calm and relaxation. And as you exhale, allow feelings of tension or stress to leave your body in your outward breath, enabling you with each and every breath to feel deeper and deeper relaxed now as you breathe in and breathe out notice that the more relaxed you feel the deeper into a trance like state you're able to go and as you continue to breathe in and breathe out notice that your arms are feeling limp and loose that any tension in your face is just melting away notice that It feels easier to breathe even deeper and as you exhale, just notice more of that air leaving your body. That's it. Deeper and deeper relaxed. And as you breathe in and breathe out, I want you to entertain the idea of memory. And just recall how many times in your life you've seen something And it's brought back a memory, a moment that you thought you'd lost. Maybe you saw an old photo, smelt a particular smell that reminded you of maybe a time in your past where that smell was also there. Maybe it's hearing a name, a song. And you can think of countless examples within your own life that the memory was always there you just needed the right trigger to access it and there's a big difference of course between memories that are there and memories that were never there to begin with you can't pick the fruit from a tree that was never planted to begin with But what if the tree is planted and you just don't know where that tree is? And as you continue to breathe in and breathe out, I want you to think of something that you would like to remember. Maybe. Maybe it's something physical that you've lost and you just don't know where it is now. Maybe. Be it's a particular phrase, something useful that would give you access, almost like a key to a new door, or maybe it's something else. Maybe the most important thing that you could recall is a belief, a belief about who you are and what you're capable of. But whatever it is, be intentional, be specific now. Think of that one thing with the frame of, if you could recall something, what would be the most important thing to recall? And then just allow your subconscious mind to go hunting for that information. And maybe it's something that all you needed was to feel relaxed and know that your unconscious mind has access to so many of your memories. And sometimes it's useful to think of everything but the thing that you're thinking of. If you're trying to remember a person, remember the place that used to know that person. Maybe the songs you used to listen to back at that time. The food you used to eat. Everything but that thing. And don't be surprised that a brain based on neural associations doesn't start filling the gaps and just presenting. Maybe an image or a name of that person that you've forgotten. 
And if it's an object that you've misplaced, that you used to have something that you valued, maybe in an heirloom or a key, something precious, either of financial value or maybe sentimental value, think of everything but the thing itself. Where did you used to have it or see it? What were the occasions that it used to be used or looked at? What physical premises was this thing based in? Did it move around and go to different places or was it always in the same place? Who were the people the other people that knew about this thing because maybe maybe it was borrowed or lent and that's the missing information not the thing or the place but the person that would have access to that thing it's always nice isn't it to assume you've lost something for good and then suddenly it's just there And then when you think back, it was obvious that with a different sequence of thinking, you could have figured out where it was all along and allow your subconscious mind to utilize every strategy that in hindsight would have worked into this new thing that somehow is misplaced or missing. And in doing so, just allow the power of your mind to Start trying to search for all of those things. Your mind can be given something to do. Almost like if you ask yourself a question, your mind can go and retrieve the answer. And the question here is that if your mind was to know where this thing is, where would it be? And how would you find it? Not that you know, but just if you were to know, where would it be? And what triggers around that thing could give you an insight to those things? That's right. I want you to get a sense. That there are so many different things. So many different things that would be useful for you to recall. But when you think about this one thing, try and describe it to yourself. If it's a physical thing, what was the size, the shape, the color, the weight? If it's a word... Start thinking of when you would have spoken those words or read that word. If it's a location of something, think of the thing itself. And then go back in time and think, where would I have put that thing back then to keep something safe if I then needed to see it later? The clue here is that If you go back and think the same way that you thought back then, maybe in the present, you can think the same way now. If it's a password, you can go back and think, what were the kind of passwords that I was using back then? Would I have written it down? Would I have typed it somewhere? And sometimes if it's on digital devices, These are automatically saved, but only on certain machines. And if you find the same machine and you access it, maybe that password is saved in a way that you could use it again. Go back in time to the moment that you first saw that word, saw that phrase. And then the moment that you wake up, just write down whatever words come to mind. Whatever phrases come to mind. And trust that your unconscious mind now 
is activating a part of your mind that you've used before unconsciously of course because there have been times in your life where maybe you've bought a new car and for a few days afterwards you couldn't help but see the same make, model and colour of car wherever you looked or maybe you heard a new word and this word was always being spoken but now that you've learnt this new word you're being reminded of it, hearing it from other people in different contexts like they're saying it for the first time this is your reticular activating system a power of your mind that seeks out what it deems to be important to you and right now you are deeming whatever this thing that you've lost or forgotten is now important to you the power of your mind will scan billions of possible bits of information deleting, filtering and presenting you through intuition clues that will enable you to hunt down whatever is relevant for you allow your unconscious mind to act as a radar a metal detector a heat seeking missile that will now hone in in the next few days and weeks if you feel intuition giving you clues as to Places you should go to. Old boxes you should look through. Old people that used to know at the time. Then follow that intuition. Because it's probably the power of your subconscious mind giving you clues to hone in. And you remember when you were a child and used to play the the game of hotter or colder. Someone would hide something there in your house and they would say if you're getting warmer or hotter or colder as you got closer or further away and just allow your unconscious mind to do the same thing now to enable you to get a sense of if you're getting warmer or cooler, hotter or colder not expecting to just magically find or discover this memory or this thing but still being open to the possibility that an insight, a eureka moment, that moment where Archimedes had that flash of inspiration jumping out of the bath when he'd figured something out, that didn't come from the conscious, that came from the subconscious, and your own eureka moment might be a flash of insight of exactly what this thing is and where it is and how you can utilize it or it might come to you slowly in clues that enable you to hone in on exactly what you need in the way that you need it but also know that even if you never recall this thing and never find this thing never remember that memory ever again your life is still valuable One of the tragedies of life is that people can live a life of if only and what could have been. The real value is knowing that you have a life to live and to make the best of whatever your situation is right now. Treat it that if you remember this thing or find this thing, recall this memory or find what you've lost, treat it like a bonus. Allow the pressure to be taken off and allow the playful imagination of your subconscious mind to be like a child playing hide and seek all over again. Make it fun, make it playful and don't be surprised if in the next few hours, days, weeks, suddenly this thing that you've been looking for you will find. And when you find it, you'll have wondered why that particular chain of thoughts, way of thinking, wasn't thought of earlier. But pay that no mind. Just know that if you find it, it's a bonus. And if you don't, then you've already written it off in your mind anyway. Assume you will never remember this thing or find this thing ever again. And now if you do, it's a bonus. 
now. As you listen to my voice, find yourself back in your body, listening to my voice firmly in the present. Because very soon, I will count from one to ten to awaken you. You will awaken feeling resourceful, receptive, open to accessing forgotten thoughts and lost memories, knowing that whatever happens is meant to happen, starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.